In my last video, I talked about the elements of spaceship design in real life, especially where NASA is concerned. And as part of that, Aaron and I discussed what would go into a spacecraft for my sci-fi novels. For those of you who don't know, there is a playlist on this channel called Aaron Does It Wrong, where Aaron builds different elements from my stories. And after we talked about what I would want in a spaceship for, for the Barpedai people, he came up with a bill that we will be sharing next week, but I thought it would be interesting for today's writing process video to share the spacecraft and talk about it in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go through the different elements that I talked about in the last video, and Aaron is going to point them out and discuss them a little bit further. So Aaron, can you walk us a little bit through the propulsion and thrust on this ship? Of course. This ship is a very massive ship, and it's massive because it's actually a freighter. This carries goods from one planet to the next, but also because it has this large blade of armor section up front, which will be important for things we'll talk about later. These are the engine assemblies right here that come off of the sides of the ship based off of these arms right here, which house the engine assemblies. The engine assembly comes off the back here, and it produces thrust out of the back of the engines right here. And this produces enough thrust to get this massive ship to an appreciable percentage of the speed of light. And power is a related element that's essential for a spaceship. So Aaron, talk a little bit about the power. Of course. The power, or the engine for this spaceship, actually is in this middle section right here. That's the engine that provides the, the power for the thrust for the engines on the side. The fuel goes to the engine right here, which provides the power for the rockets, which gives it thrust. Another important element I discussed in the previous video is navigation. So we'll talk a little bit about that with this ship. The navigation for this ship comes off of the front, as you can see here. And our navigational array is multi-pronged, and there's many backups for this as well. What I have up front is what I'm calling the gravitational anomaly detector. Now, the Tadara Bray have developed a sense to actually feel the gravitational pull of small animals that they're hunting as they have evolved. And the extension of this is they have a, developed a sensor where they can actually sense small particles bits of spaceship that have fallen off of other spaceships in the navigation lanes and avoid them through the ship. But as I said, they also have many redundant systems on here. So right here, we have a redundant system. We have a redundant system that comes down here. But we also have redundant systems off the side. Right here. And right here. Another important element is communication and data handling. So if you'll speak a little bit about that on this ship. The communication for the ship is of course handled through the bridge, which is this section right here. But because this ship, you know, flies from one point to the next, it has to have a communication system where it's able to receive the messages that come from both the planet it's traveling to and the planet that it's traveling from. And for this, I've chosen to put the communication system right here. It's this sensor on the side here. And this allows communication rays from both the front and the back. And then, of course, all this communication is processed through the bridge here. But once again, this has a secondary system, which is this system on the front right here. This is the secondary communication system. Another important aspect is thermal management. So speak a little bit about how it maintains temperature. Of course. The interstellar medium doesn't allow for efficient transfer of heat that's produced in the ship to leave the ship. And this is actually dangerous because that means that high levels of heat can build up in the ship. In the front of the ship, we have this piece right here. And this conducts thermal energy that's produced in the sensor array here, uh, through the bridge right here, and in the living quarters, which are right here, and allows it to be taken and basically uh, vented off into space. Now, the engine 
has a much larger thermal array right here. And that's because the, the engine and the propulsion system generates so much heat that it actually has to have a bigger array to get it safely out into space. And I've tried to give this representation with all the paints that are running up the side here. I hope it works, I don't know. And finally, I spoke about environmental considerations, essentially making sure that the ship doesn't fall apart in various gravities, weather, air temperature, pressure, etc. So Aaron, if you can speak a little bit about that. The first and probably the most important thing is that this spaceship will never be into will never be in a planet's atmosphere. It receives its loaded cargo as it rests in Lagrange points and it gets the cargo from other ships that come into and out of the atmosphere. Now this ship does fly at an appreciable percent of the speed of light and therefore it's important that it has a really good system that will stop all of the material that's in the interstellar medium. Now everybody thinks of course that space is empty and it largely is empty but there are a lot of things in space still, mostly microscopic grains of sand and gases such as hydrogen. Now, these, as they hit a spaceship, will eventually cause ablation off of the front of the spaceship and actually produce radiation, which will kill astronauts. I've tried to add an armored front onto this where it's able to intercept these gases and these microscopic particles of sand as they hit the spaceship and deflect them off into space. And this also protects the crew from the radiation that is caused by these as well. Now, you'll notice on the front, my gravitational anomaly deflector is kind of out there in the middle and it's in prime space to hit all of these. What I've done on the front is I put this little shielding on the front and this protects this array from all of these particles that it could hit. And in this way, I've tried to protect the crew and the ship from any of the radiation from these sand particles and these gaseous particles. So that in total is the freighter for the Barpadai peoples. Next week, Aaron does it wrong to build this spaceship. And until then, if you have any questions about anything that you see on the ship, now that you've gotten a, a closer view and kind of a sneak peek of it, please put them down in the comments and just ask us anything about the ship or what you see on it or what these items are for. We, we would love to answer more about this world and the Barpadai spaceship itself. And until next time, keep creating.